My dear brothers and sisters, it is another wonderful day that we are actually here. And today we are blessed, especially in Kenya, Nairobi. It, the weather is very nice. It's very bright, sunny day. And I think it's, a, it's an indication that January is just on the way because the sun is almost direct at the equator. And uh, today I've been privileged even to listen to one of the talks that was given by one of the uh, quorum of the 70s, sometimes back, some years back. And this was a talk that uh, actually provides a lot of encouragement, uh, especially to those who may be actually feeling uh, different or may be going through some different kind of challenges. And I know uh, after the corona, a lot of countries are experiencing the effects of corona because of an economical downtime. And uh, there could be a lot of challenges you know, some people have lost jobs, some companies have been shut. And I know there are a lot of challenges. Like uh, I can also, I can see it even uh, in my country here where the economy is not actually doing good because the ripples and effects of what Corona had done. And uh, a lot of people are jobless. A lot of families are suffering uh, from economical pressures and uh, they do not have maybe enough funds to fend for their families. And I know there's a lot of things that are happening today. A lot of things that are happening today. But uh, as I was thinking about that, something came into my mind and I started looking for a quote. Uh, I started looking for a talk. And uh, I was led to this talk, which was given some years back. And uh, this is actually one of the most profound talks that I came across, which I think it is relevant uh, to the current situation that a lot of countries are going through now and uh, without further ado let me just invite you let us just listen to this talk and uh, uh you're welcome the wide-bodied airliner began its takeoff roll returning us to the united states after a four-year business assignment in switzerland as we accelerated past the b concourse at the zurich international airport I strained to see if the faithful farewell wishers from our Zurich Second Ward were there. Sure enough, there standing on the upper spectator's deck, waving to us, were Sister Groip and Sister Coppice. By bus, tram, and train, they had made this extraordinary effort to say goodbye to the Hancock family. Pent-up emotions erupted as tears unashamedly poured down my cheeks. One of our four children returning with us inquired of her mother, Why is Daddy crying? Connie responded, Because he loves the people here so much. These dear Swiss sisters symbolize so many of Heavenly Father's faithful daughters who go about doing good. The lack of a car for transportation, or a husband for love and protection, or a supportive family, or a special understanding friend does not damper their enthusiasm for the gospel of Jesus Christ or their participation in church meetings and related activities. We thrill in the loyalty and love of the recently widowed Ruth for her mother-in-law Naomi, who earlier had also lost her husband. The Moabitess chose to leave her homeland to accompany and care for Naomi. Down through the generations of time, the beautiful words of this faithful and determined daughter, who would with Boaz be a progenitor of Jesse, David and Jesus Christ speak to our yearning hearts. Entreat me not to leave thee, or to return from following after thee. For whither thou goest, I will go, and where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God my God. Legion are the stories that could and need to be told of women valiant in their testimonies of Jesus Christ who are unsung heroines in our midst. Among these noble women are those who through the tragedy of divorce or untimely death of a husband are of necessity required to take on the additional challenge of employment to, prov to provide for family and self. Though physically and emotionally exhausted upon returning home each day, she resumes her most important role of feeding, teaching, encouraging, correcting, and loving her children so that they are nurtured in mind and spirit to be socially responsible, 
financially self-sufficient and committed to serving the Lord. Her challenging burdens are frequently overlooked and not understood by those blessed with the two-parent family orientation. Wise are the bishop, priesthood leader, and Relief Society president who ensure that carefully selected home and visiting teachers are given the opportunity to assist her with her children's needs and home maintenance. Their regular messages and visits bring hope and encouragement so often when most needed. There are those family-devoted women, whether single or married, who in this life have been unable to have children of their own. The maternal instinct causes them to reach out and care for the children of others as if they were their own. What a wonderful gift it is to have such a, such a special aunt whose humble abode and loving personal interest makes for a joyous second home. There are those dear women, young and old, with special sensitivity to a familiar spirit who seem to effortlessly respond to the missionary's message and without family support join the church. There they find love, respect, and the opportunity to serve, which oftentimes brings relief from contention, abuse, and hopelessness. The coming week can more easily be navigated following a Sabbath day where she was numbered among the people of the Church of Christ and remembered and nourished by the good word of God to keep her in the right way, continually watchful unto prayer, relying alone upon the merits of Christ. There are those women of misfortune, laden with despair, sorrow, lack of love at home, or the guilt and consequences from having trodden in forbidden paths. Away from the community of the saints where succor can be provided, they await being befriended by one in whom they can confidently place their injured trust and who can restore their self-esteem and tenderly accompany them back to truth and light. There is the patient woman whose husband is a good man, but has not yet shared her need for him to return to or join the church and bring the blessings of the priesthood into their home and family. She quietly but fervently prays for that good Samaritan in the church who can uniquely reach out and relate to her husband in a Christ-like way to lead him to the church where he can feel welcomed, needed, and loved. The baggage of the past with feelings of guilt and unworthiness are dispelled by the warmth of those who with her see the goodness of his soul. As the Swiss movers were packing our household belongings, preparatory to our return to America, the doorbell rang. A special delivery mailman had a package for us. When opened, it revealed a green pillow with an embroidered message of love on it, the handiwork of Sister Elise Roosterholtz. Our hearts and feelings swelled as we thought of this wonderful older sister. For four years, she had graced our Sunday dinner table with her sweet spirit and lively sense of humor. For many years, as a single unmarried sister and the only member of the church from her family, she struggled to come to church. Early Sunday morning, she would leave her humble second floor apartment. With great effort, due to a crippled leg, she would walk down the outside stairway and onto the Kuznacht train station, beginning her journey of one hour and 15 minutes by train, tram, bus, and a final walk to our meeting house. What a blessing it had been for us in that beautiful land to pick up Sister Roosterholtz every Sunday morning, accompany her to church, and conclude with dinner in our home before returning her to her apartment. There are many sweet, faithful daughters of our Heavenly Father who bless our lives. May we better understand them and be as sensitive to their needs as was the Savior when he instinctively sensed the touching of the hem of his garment and the faith of a long, diseased woman behind him. As Jesus said to her, so may our actions affirm to our noble sisters, daughter, be of good comfort, of him and his invitation to love one another as he loves us. I do testify in his name, even Jesus Christ. Amen. It was a very profound talk by Elder Hancock, who served as a member of the Quorum of the Seventy uh, some years back. As you can see, that was quite a, a long time when they were still giving talks in, in the Tabernacle uh, Conference. And uh, the major uh, uh, topic, the major insight or principle there that he was enlightening is about loving one another. 
that we need to love one another as we, as the savior said that love one another for this is my commandment and and, and love love conquers all like one of the singer at one time sang and said love conquers all and uh, and, and i think that is one of the greatest thing that i as a person have made that resolution that no matter what uh in the in this year no matter what in this year mine is to ensure that i love i love people i love people whether whether they don't love me whether they they, are, they consider themselves as enemies uh whether they feel like they are uncomfortable with me or whether wherever they may think of themselves but mine is just to love one another mine is to love them and and that is actually a message from the spirit that whispered to me today and that is why when i was looking for a talk i ended up founding this talk uh which elder hancock is actually emphasizing that we need to love each other we need to make people feel welcomed we need to embrace each other and we need to walk in the ways that heavenly father actually taught and i like when he gave uh his uh his example when he was leaving the place switzerland is a place where he served for quite some time and as he was leaving he saw people members of the uh switzerland uh, members of the church in switzerland who were actually on the launching days trying to wave to him as he's boarding the plane you know and uh, and, and and he started crying because of the much and greater love that he had for this wonderful brothers and sisters and 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 this is something very key that uh, if we are serving our brothers and sisters let let us serve them with a lot of love let them know that we love them and uh, it is only through the spirit of love that we will win even people into the church we we'll win them into the church because what people will always want to find a place where they are loved where they are treated well a place where you know they are edified and 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 that is really key that is really key so this is the new year's resolution love ye one another as ye you love yourselves and this was the lord's commandment that you may love one another as he actually loved loved us and love conquers all my dear brothers and sisters love one another otherwise thank you very much for this wonderful day and i quite appreciate you for actually taking time to look and watch and listen uh, to this talk otherwise thank you very much and may the lord be with you throughout this year and may his spirit also comfort you and take you through uh, uh the things that you may the challenges that we may actually be facing you know it could be economical challenges it could be whatever challenges that you are facing but at the end of it all the secret to success is ensure that we love one another that when we love each other then love will conquer all the lord will just open ways because we are keepers of his principles otherwise thank you very much god bless you and see you next time